They do have a timeout. Decide not to use it. Curry, way downtown. Bang! Bang! U.S. presidents are a lot like NBA players because most of them are completely irrelevant. Now, if showing my basketball biases wasn't bad enough, it's time to show my political biases too. Yay! Wow! What a what a great video topic. I hope this doesn't blow up in my face. What could go wrong? Number one, George Washington. Everybody believes George Washington is one of, if not the GOAT right now currently, of the presidents. Uh, and he really was a large-in-life presence who criticized the politics of the time, wanted to just chill at Mount Vernon, and probably wouldn't even have had to do the presidency if he didn't think it was necessary. And I cannot think of a better comparison than Nikola Jokic. Same kind of vibe, same energy, both technically not born in the U.S. And Jokic, honestly, if he didn't need the money, probably would just go race some horses. John Adams. John Adams is a president who might be a solid president, but he's just completely overshadowed by the eras that came before and after him. Um, and I cannot think of a better comparison than Chris Paul, a guy who's kind of totally lost the time between the Kobe, LeBron, and Curry eras. No one really... There was no time for Chris Paul. Um, both of them were quite tiny men for their for their respective times and were famously very loud, very rambunctious, great leaders, uh, but kind of forgotten between the uh, between the threads. Number three, Thomas Jefferson. Thomas Jefferson as a president, I don't think is very much criticized. I think it's pretty much just the off court stuff. People love Jefferson president. They don't quite love Jefferson the man. And I cannot think of a better person to to distinguish that upon than Kyrie Irving, um, another great basketball player, and another mostly solid dude, uh, better than Jefferson. James Madison was really, really ideologically similar to Jefferson, so I want to have a player that's very, very similar to Kyrie Irving, but without the same level of impact, kind of just doing what he did just a little bit below. And for that, I'm going to choose Jamal Murray. Both won a title. Both have had solid seasons, uh, but have not kind of been the number one guys on the team, at least successfully. Um, and I think they're a really nice comparison. Comparing Madison to Jefferson is probably like comparing Murray to Irving. Um, I'll bet Murray and Irving probably have a little more beef. James Monroe is often kind of forgotten, but for kind of a good reason. His, his presidency was really categorized by what's called the era of good feelings. Just all around nice vibes. Nothing crazy goat status, but it was a really good time. And for that, he's going to get the Derek White treatment. Everybody wants Derek White on their team. Everybody loves Derek White. He does everything really well. Sure, I wouldn't put him on the Jokic tier, but can't go wrong. John Quincy Adams. By this logic, it should be Chris Paul's son. But Chris Paul hasn't really sunned anybody in the NBA quite as well. John Quincy Adams also famously did some shady stuff to get his uh, spot in the presidency. And I'm trying to think of a guy, probably going to be go with Jose Alvarado because Chris Paul has A, beat him in a series, and Alvarado does kind of skirt the line of what is... He doesn't do anything that's against the rules, nor did John Quincy Adams that I know of, but they do definitely push it to their boundaries. Andrew Jackson. I am not... Uh, this is not... This I've already hit a wall here. I mean, I've got a damned if I do, damned if I don't, um, considering that these people own other people. So I really... I want to make clear that this guy who killed tens of thousands of people uh, is not <laughs> directly comparable to this other guy. But I'm going to go Draymond Green because I can't really go with a worse guy because Andrew Jackson was very consequential. Uh, he had some redeeming qualities. His presence was the first time that all uh, men could vote in this country. Previously, only men with property could own this country. Um, so it's a small step forward. Um, but again... You know, any of those small steps, any of Draymond Green's actual talent is just totally marred by um, by the Trail of Tears and by all, all the other controversies that you might know of or, or not. Don't read, or you should read up on it, I would say so, but it, it, it's pretty depressing. Martin Van Buren was kind of like Andrew Jackson's hype man. He was his VP and then became his president and then really, aside from being Dutch, had nothing to do about him. So I'm going to say... Kevon Looney. William Henry Harrison was the shortest tenured president in history because he got sick on his inaugural day speech, caught a cold, and died over just a little bit over a month into his office. And so we'll go with the youngest NBA player, Gigi Jackson of the Grizzlies. James K. Polk, probably pretty underrated in terms of his impact and also underrated in potentially his like badness because he's a warmonger and also caused a lot of deaths um so i'll go paul george because paul george is very impactful he's not 
the Jokic tier, nor is James K. Polk. Paul George, if you look at his Wikipedia page, he has some sketchy stuff, but he did not, uh, I'm legally obligated to tell you by Paul George's lawyers that he did not start a war with Mexico. Zachary Taylor, Evan Mobley, deal with it. Millard Fillmore, Alpert Sengun. I just, I just kind of see it. I imagine Millard Fillmore playing like Sengun if he was in the NBA. Franklin Pierce. This one's on. Franklin Pierce is Kevin Herter. I, if Franklin Pierce, I don't even, I don't even think he is a lefty, but I just imagine him as like this, like lefty, dead eye shooter. So I'm gonna say Kevin Herter. I know Kevin Herter is right-handed, but the limited option pool here. James Buchanan is often cited as one of the worst presidents um, because he didn't stop the Civil War. Not that he necessarily could have stopped the Civil War, but he didn't really seem to try super hard. Um, really, probably the most important time to have a good presidency, uh, and he really did not rise up when it matters most. In other words, he's a choker. In other words, I think James Harden. Abraham Lincoln, the GOAT. The just bruiser, an amazing leader, an amazing man, and one of the greatest to ever do it on and off the court. If it wasn't for injuries, he would have been the GOAT, in my opinion. Um, he might still be the GOAT, even with his short-lived uh, second term, or not really much of a second term at all. But So I'm going to say Giannis here. I imagine Abe playing on the court as very physical, very inside-focused, maybe not a great shooter. Um, and like Giannis, you know, if he didn't get injured um, in those two years, he may have another title, but uh, I love them both. I also have a soft spot for Giannis uh, and, a, and a soft spot for Abe Lincoln, I suppose. Andrew Johnson is a terrible follow-up to Abe Lincoln and my personally least favorite president ever. He slowed down re the reconstruction of the South. He fought uh, the other kind of unionists after the Civil War, trying to let a lot of kind of corrupt people into his administration very much cronies over policy um and it is hard to find someone like that he was very impactful for the wrong reasons and as a result he was impeached um or in nba terms i guess suspended um he wouldn't have been banned if he was convicted but uh, i think this metaphor has gone too long i'm gonna say john morant uh john morant if you're watching i'm very sorry i compared to andrew johnson but someone's got to be here important but mostly not for the right reasons ulysses s grant grant is such an underrated president there were centuries of historical revisionism done by racists to discredit grant grant obviously as a general was much more well known than him as a president and i think i'm gonna say mike Connolly, just a guy underrated you'd love him on your team uh he's done a lot of work outside of the court outside of the presidency um, and I think Grant deserves a lot more credit, and I think Mike Conley is pretty cool too. Okay, we got a lot of Gilded Age Republicans, and I don't really care for them. Sorry, not sorry. Rutherford B. Hayes, Miles Turner, James A. Garfield, Wendell Carter Jr., Chester A. Arthur, DeMontis Sabonis. That one might be a bit generous to Chester A. Arthur, but I'll let it slide. Grover Cleveland. Grover Cleveland is the only president to ever and it might change come November, but he's currently the only president ever to serve two non-consecutive terms. Um, so I want to find a guy who won championships very far apart. And I've tried to keep it two current players, but I'll make this one exception because uh, he's an, an, an exceptional president technically. Um, and I'm going to say Rajon Rondo uh, won the championship in 2008 and then 2020. And uh, Grover Cleveland fans, you know, speak your truth. Benjamin Harrison, Cole Anthony. McKinley Loki was also very important. You know, started the Spanish-American War was not really a good thing to do in hindsight. Um, he's the reason we have Hawaii. Also not maybe the best thing to have done in hindsight. And was assassinated, so his, his tenure was cut short despite having a lot of impact. I'm going to say Zion for this one, just because injuries plus impact plus slight off-court controversies. You thought I would... You thought I would put Zion for William Howard Taft. I know. I know, I know, you thought it, you thought it, it's not happening. Teddy fucking Roosevelt. I'm coming around to the idea that Teddy might be the best Roosevelt. It's close, but I, I love Teddy Roosevelt, love the national parks, love the trust busting, love just his commitment to America, the land, um, and democracy, and I just think that's great. I think he's really one of the all-time great presidents. I do think that his Mount Rushmore status is probably the weak end of Mount Rushmore, but honestly, I have personal love for him, and I think that I can think of no one better than Luca, another really tough, great player in this league who does so many things well. 
um, Teddy Roosevelt and Luca. William Howard Taft, a really weak follow-up to Luca. I mean, um, Teddy Roosevelt. And I can't really think of a, a great player for this. Uh, I will not be considering his time in the Supreme Court. He's the only president to serve both as president and Supreme Court justice. Um, so I will say Tingus Pingus, Chris Taps Porzingis, um, but I don't have a ton else to say about William Howard Taft. Woodrow Wilson is a bad president. He's like the first Democrat I think we've seen that's of note in like a hundred year horrible racist, had a lot of really warmongering policies about globalism, um, you know, really, really tough guy to get along with. Gonna say that it's gonna be Joel Embiid uh, because Wilson was very important. Um, he is considered a very important president of that time um, for at least just getting the US into World War I. Um, Embiid was a dirty player. Wilson uh, was just for segregation. So, I mean, it's <laughs> Warren G. Harding. The only thing I know about Harding is that his personal life got in the way of any sense of policy. Um, Spicy wasn't impeached, pretty much nothing else. So I'm going to say John Tay Porter uh, because the two guys only known for their controversy, pretty much nothing else to talk about. Calvin Coolidge was a man famous for having few words. At a White House dinner, this reporter comes up to him and says, you know, I bet my friend that I can get you to say three words. And Coolidge goes, you lose. And I think that is Kawhi Leonard. I think Coolidge did not do what Kawhi Leonard's on the NBA, um, but just in their calm demeanor and men of few words, if you will. Herbert Hoover has had a weird resurgence recently. I've noticed a lot of Hoover fans try to rebuild his legacy. He was previously thought of in that Andrew Johnson tier, and I do not think he belongs in the Andrew Johnson tier, but he is, in my opinion, a bad president, has a lot of stains on his legacy. Um, and I don't think that anything I have been told can convince that. So rabid fanboys try to build up a player who has really bad reputation. That's Russell Westbrook. Sorry, Westbrook, but I will always be a Hoover hater, and I will always be a Westbrook hater. Franklin Della Vadova Roosevelt. No, it's not Della Vadova, but Franklin Delano Roosevelt, FDR, is an extremely important president, uh, whether you would like him or not. He is the founder of our social welfare state. Um, in this country. He was presided over the U.S. during World War II. He's the only one to serve more than two terms. He served four terms. The longevity is crazy on this one. He has an incredible resume of impact uh, for his fans. But I think the one thing that conservatives and liberals can agree on is he really fucked up with the internment camps. Uh, horrible stain on an otherwise amazing uh, presidency in, in getting his agenda done, which is what I'm going to try to judge it on as opposed to whether I like it or not. I happen to like most of it, but that is un undoubtedly a terrible, terrible stain on his legacy. So longevity with a single stain, I'm going to say LeBron James. LeBron James, crazy longevity, crazy resume. And if you just change 2011, if you just get rid of that one thing, he might be the GOAT. Harry Truman is one of my favorite presidents. I have a very big soft spot for Harry Truman. He was a very humble, you know, relatively poor man. He's actually the reason why we have the presidential pension system is because he was basically going broke after the presidency. Um, you know, very conscious of the U.S. and its role as a democracy, uh, helped rebuild Europe after World War II with the Marshall Plan. Um, just a super important but also humble figure. Uh, and I think Shea Gildas Alexander. Dwight D. Eisenhower is probably a top four Republican of all time, in my opinion. I think most people are pretty nice on him because he wasn't too conservative for the liberals. He did a lot of publicly funded interstate bills, but he also wasn't too liberal for the for conservatives because he also was very strongly believer in the U.S.'s democracy, in the U.S.'s global power. Um, just really solid all the way. He doesn't have that long-lasting legacy that FDR has. I think he was a really solid guy. Obviously, maybe one of the most important figures of World War II, being the Supreme Commander of the Allies. And for that, I will say Jason Tatum. Uh, just really solid all around. Maybe not going to be on the Jokic Giannis tier, but really, really solid top guy. Definitely belongs in the upper echelon. John F. Kennedy is a very interesting example because of how beloved he is um, despite his presidency being cut so tragically short. I think Kawhi actually would be a great comparison in terms of what they've done and what they didn't get to do. Um, we already used Kawhi, so I'm going to say Derek Rose, just a guy who could have been 
up there with the greats, but did not because of, of tragic injuries. LBJ, Lyndon Baines Johnson, not LeBron James, is an asshole by every historical account. But he is an asshole who got a lot of stuff done, and a lot of stuff is Medicare and Medicaid and things I quite happen to like as a policy. Um, so I can't really doubt what he did, but I can definitely doubt how he did it. So more the persona than the, than the than policy, of course. I'll say Devin Booker for that, someone who I dislike as a person, but I can't deny that he's a good player. The Vietnam thing is really bad. But overall, I think that's, the, that's what I'll go with. Nixon was such a choker. He actually could have had a really nice legacy if he just did not have the mental paranoia and just absolutely batshit craziness that he had you know he he established the epa he normalized relations with china um scaled back the vietnam war but he just he couldn't help himself he just wanted more and he was so paranoid and he just took himself down i think it was a self implosion i think that's jordan pool i think jordan pool if he knew his role tried to stick into what he was really built for i think he could have been a great player i think nixon could have been a great president house of cards blew up on itself gerald ford could get it gerald ford played college football i think and he's probably the most athletic president so he might be maybe the second best president at basketball i think i'll say lowry markinen just how i imagine gerald ford playing um because there's no footage of him playing basketball unfortunately but i generally like Ger gerald doesn't do a whole much very short presidency because he takes over for Nixon um, after he is impeached and resigns. Uh, and Larry Markman similarly has not done a lot yet in his career. Jimmy Carter is a tale of two men, almost opposite to, to what we've been saying, where it's his presidency is not really looked very fondly upon, um, but his off court, meaning his after presidency is looked at maybe one of the best post presidencies of all time um, because of his charitable work in Africa with Guinea worm. I have no one in basketball senses I can compare this to. I'm gonna say Patrick Williams for some reason, just because he seems really nice in, in interviews, but as a player, my Patrick Williams island stock is falling very fast. Um, but he always seemed like a really nice guy. Ronald Reagan, whether you like him or not, is maybe one of the most influential, if not the most influential figure in modern conservative movement. Um, he's extremely charismatic, was extremely successful both with his political opponents and allies in getting shit done, winning smile, winning hair, just like a poster boy for, for his movement. And that's Stephen Curry. Um, Stephen Curry, so extroverted, so great to have him as that face, being so influential and being one of the top uh, in, in just having that impact, that long lasting impact, whether you agree with it or not. George H.W. Bush was crazy underrated. I have to think about this, but he might be my most underrated president. Um, he had a ton of great accomplishments, a very high degree of integrity. He established the Americans with Disabilities Act, um, or should I say enforced it because he was president, not Congress. Being the director of the CIA, he had a lot of foreign policy experience. Desert Storm is probably the last time America had a good war. Generally think he was just a, a man of very strong moral character um, and very underrated. So I'm gonna say Paolo Bancaro. I think Paolo Bancaro is a very underrated player probably the most underrated all-star right now. I think leading a team to the fifth seed is an incredible feat that he's not been recognized for. So, Paolo Mancaro, <laughs> George H.W. Bush, there you go. Bill Clinton, there's a lot of different angles I can take with this. Bill Clinton, uh, as a president, the economy probably had its best uh, time, oh my God, maybe in the entire 20th century. There was a budget surplus for the first time since like ever. Globalization was still a good word under Clinton. Generally just had a lot of great stuff happen during his presidency, but obviously much like Nixon, he is marred by his impeachment and by his scandal, um, which I don't believe he should have been impeached for, but nevertheless, uh, it just overshadowed it all. Josh Giddy. Yeah. Uh. George W. Bush to Electric Boogaloo is kind of lame. I really dislike his presidency. Similar to Jimmy Carter, George W. Bush seems like a hilarious guy. I think I would love to get a beer with him, but I really would never vote for him. Just disastrous economic foreign policy decisions. Um, it doesn't matter if the other side would have done it anyway. He did do it. I think there could have been a lot worse presidents to have during 9-11 during all of his kind of during Katrina, although he kind of sucked, I'm not gonna lie. But so 
disappointing. Seems like a nice guy, but really could have been so much more. Uh, and I think D'Angelo Russell really is the guy that I think of when I think of George W. Bush in the NBA. Oh, they're even both lefties. Obama is the basketball president goat. That is undisputable. He's the first president to actually care about basketball. He's the first president to actually like play basketball and we have like photographs of him doing it and not looking like a total idiot. Um, shifty lefty. I personally don't think he's a perfect president, but I think he's going to go down very well in the history books. I have a lot of admiration for him as a man and a president, and I think it's a mold that the Democrats have failed to match yet, obviously. And it's interesting because I could take it in a few different directions of his literal comp versus his presidential comp. Literally, just looking at how he plays, he plays very Jalen Brunson-y, and I think he is a Jalen Brunson tier of president. And yeah, Obama... Great, great for basketball and presidency intersections. I think that is that much is very obvious. Donald Trump is the reason I made this video. Uh, Donald Trump is Patrick Beverly, chaos, uh, yelling, stirring up trouble, being absolutely hilarious while they do it. But I do not want either in the Oval Office. But if I could get Trump at the NBA, I definitely would heavily consider it. Joe Biden. Joe Biden is very old. He's the oldest president. Um, and I would choose the oldest player, which is LeBron, but I have already taken him. So I will choose the second oldest player, PJ Tucker. And fate of the world on the line, I think Biden could hit a corner three. I think he could. Maybe when he was 39 and not like 84. PJ Tucker versus Patrick Beverly. That's a very interesting debate that I will surely not comment on right now. But I hope you enjoyed the president NBA comparison. I really hope this doesn't blow up my face.